Hey, Matt here. Just wanted to go over and go through the basic proxy harvester, uh, the new one that just came out. i um, seen a lot of questions about it. So I went ahead and loaded up uh, 50 or so just proxies I pulled up right here. Set manage proxies. I'm basically just going to go through it. So you can harvest proxies in Scrapebox if you want. I didn't do that for this video, but you can do it there. And then under harvest, you get the options to um, replace the current list or just add to it. Pretty basic. For loading, also pretty basic. You can merge into current list or load it off your clipboard, that sort of thing. Um, for those of you who want to use it with Google, uh, you probably don't want to check this box. Um, but if you're wanting to, say, use proxies for Yahoo or whatever, you would you could uncheck this box and it won't, it's not going to check it against Google. Test is pretty straightforward. We're going to hit that and it's actually just going to start testing our proxies here. And I went ahead and set it on a pretty aggressive 10 second timeout. Maybe want to go ahead and leave it higher than that. You can figure that out though. Test it and see what works for you based on what you're doing. So it's going to run through the list. It's going to check everything against Google here to see if it's going to work with Google. Then it's going to do an IP test on everything to see if it's protecting your IP from being known. So we'll let that complete here. And then it's going to do a latency test over here just to get you the fastest proxies. And then the new proxy filter is nice because it gives us a lot of options to utilize the different elements here that we want. So it's finished. And we can see we can clean up. We can get rid of duplicate proxies. If we want, we can filter out the higher latency proxies. Just set the latency that you want and go with that. We're going to leave that alone. You can also filter proxies. Now here's where some confusion seems to be. Before, um, it gave you different options where you could just save to this. This actually lets you filter the proxies based on what you want before you save it. So you can filter it um, based on Google. So if you're looking for Google, you want it passed. If you're posting to say Yahoo, you may just want to ignore this. Um, you definitely probably want the IP test to be passed. Um, although if you're looking for failed ones to say unblock, use the unlock feature for your particular session, you can utilize that. So we're just going to use them both as passed for now, apply that, and we see that that leaves us with 16 proxies down here that have passed both the IP test and the Google test. We can then export those and save those to disk and it's only going to see what you see on the screen here, the ones you just filtered, or you can just transfer them to the main list. We also get the option to create a report and then export that to Excel if we like and it gives us all the info here. Then we can close it. Pretty straightforward really. Um, lots of nice filters in this one. Lots of different ways that you can approach it. And that is the new Proxy Harvester. Oh yes, just wanted to say one other thing. Um, depending on how you filter different things and um, remove duplicates and different things you hit, this proxy list number down here doesn't always update. So if you have, say, 500 proxies and you hit remove duplicates, it's going to remove them off the list, but it's not going to change the number down here, at least not as of the current version. Um, this is very new. I'm sure that in, in the future that'll probably be updated, perhaps not. Don't know what the significance there is, but um, don't get freaked out if you make some changes or apply some filters and this number doesn't update. Um, or these numbers necessarily. What really matters is it's doing it correctly in the background and when you save it or export it or do whatever, it's going to do what you told it to do.